Hello friends, today I would like to show you how to install an additional M2 NVMe drive in your Lenovo Legion 5 laptop. This is going to be pretty simple, we're just going to go through all the steps. The procedure might be similar for other Lenovo Legion laptops, but I cannot guarantee that for sure, so there might be still some differences in a disassembly procedure, so make sure you have your service manual and know how to disassemble it before you proceed. And if you find this video helpful, please give it a like, subscribe to my channel for more interesting and helpful videos, and if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments section below. Alright, let's get started. First thing first, before you start disassembling any electric device, you want to make sure it's disconnected from power, and since it's a laptop, it has a built-in battery, and we want to make sure that this battery is also disconnected. So first thing we want to do, we want to go to the BIOS, then go to the More Settings, on the left tab, you get to find configuration. Then just gotta scroll down where you find disable built in battery. As you can see, you have this option in Lenovo Legion laptop, which is really great. So you just gotta click on that. And then it says the system will be powered down. If you select yes, you just gotta click yes. You wanna proceed. Once you click yes, it will just shut down the laptop. And then you're gonna be safe to disassemble it. Unplug the power cord from the laptop because it still has power going from the wall outlet. Right now we have the power supply unplugged, so let's get to the disassembly process. So the first step you want to do, you make sure to unplug all the Bluetooth adapters or any USB sticks that are still in the USB ports. And of course disconnect all HDMI cables and so on. So you just work on the laptop itself. Usually the Bluetooth adapters are the one that might cause some issues if you don't notice them. As you can see on the back, there are 10 screws that are holding the back cover to the laptop. So we want to unscrew them all before we can get to the next step. And I highly recommend downloading the service manual and printing the page that's going to be showing where those screws are and where the clips are, because this will help you to safely disassemble the laptop and without breaking any clips or potentially even breaking the cover. So yeah, make sure you do that. But if you're watching this video and you're working on this exact model, then you're going to be no problem because I'm going to show you exactly where those screws and clips are. And I'm just going to fast forward it so you don't have to wait for very long. And just a quick tip for you guys, if you find that these screws are recessed pretty deep there and you cannot get them out, you can use a small magnet and then just attach it to the screwdriver and this will help it to lift it off that recessed hole. So you can get them out pretty easy. As you can see, they just get stuck to the screwdriver. Or if you have a magnetic screwdriver, that would work as well. All right, let's get it done. As you can see, according to the service manual, there are multitude of latches on each side. So there are four in the front, four in the back, and three on each side, whilst there is one in the middle. So you gotta be careful not to break them. So to pry it up, I usually use like a guitar pick. Actually, you can buy them from any repair kit for like cell phones. They're pretty thin, but they're still pretty sturdy so that they're not gonna bend. And they're also not gonna damage the material of the laptop. This way, you're not gonna leave any scratches. And it is a very slow job, especially if you've never done it. You gotta be careful because if you don't wanna pry it up too fast because it might break some latches and then it may not close the same way. So yeah, just gotta take your time, slowly find those latches and slowly pry them up. I will fast forward this video, but if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comment section below. I'll try to help you if you run into any problems. So drop your comments in the comment section below. Another tool that I like to use is this little plastic pry bar. It is made out of sturdy plastic, so it also doesn't bend, but it doesn't damage the plastic, so that works very good as well. So you can use a combination of these tools to pry up the latches on this laptop and find what works best for you. <laughs>
As you can see, I got it almost pried up and almost all the latches are released. But the most difficult part is where the side vents for the fans are. And there are three latches there and they're pretty tough and pretty difficult to release. So you got to be patient and be careful not to break them. But overall, it's not that difficult of a job. I prefer using the thin guitar pick for this because it's much thinner than that other pry bar tool and it works very good. So yeah, just got to be patient and keep doing it. So once we get all the clips and latches released from the sides and from the front and the back, as per the service manual diagram, there is also one latch in the middle. So it should pop up as soon as you lift the bottom cover. So basically you just got to pull it up until you hear that click and then the bottom cover will come off. There we go. So it comes off pretty easy. Let's have a quick look at the bottom cover. As you can see, there is this middle latch over here located almost in the middle under the fan vents and yeah this is the last latch that's holding the bottom cover and yeah overall everything is well thought like all the components in this lenovo laptop i'm really impressed with the quality of this laptop so let's have a look at the battery as you can see this is a 60 watt hour battery that is included in this particular model you can get a model with the 80 watt hour battery as well and as you can see there is a lot of room still left for the bigger battery that you can install yourself or if you buy in a model that already comes with the 80 watt hour battery this is where it's going to be located so this video guys is actually universal for replacing the battery as well as adding a new ssd but i'm using it mostly plugged into the wall outlet so i don't really need that large battery another thing worth mentioning is that this laptop's got a very good cooling system it's got dual fan like most gaming laptops but it has a very thick heat pipes and they're also connected together so that CPU and GPU are connected together. So the heat is going to be dissipated much better. And under this metal shield, there are two slots for M2 and VME SSDs. One is already installed from the factory and one we're going to install today. So let's go ahead and pull off this metal shield. So these metal shields are basically M2 and VME radiators that dissipate the heat from the M2 drive. And as you can see, there's a thermal pad that sticks to the back of this metal shield for good thermal transfer to allow it to contact with the rear cover of the laptop to dissipate the heat outside of the laptop. So as we can see, this heat spreader is exactly the same as the other side. It actually has a thermal pad already. And I'm actually probably not going to use it because I already bought an M2 NVMe drive that comes with a heat sink. So it won't fit there and I don't really want to pull off this heatsink that came with this NVMe drive. So I'm just going to use this original heatsink that came with this ADATA XPG SSD drive because I don't really want to pull it off. But I really appreciate that Lenovo have included two heatsinks in case the NVMe drive that you have is not going to have a heatsink. This will help it to keep it cooler which means it's going to work better. ADATA XPG Gamix S50 Lite is an excellent NVMe SSD drive. And if you want to see a full unboxing and test on my channel, there is a video. I'll put a link in the upper right corner and one in the description. So check it out if you want to see how it works. To install it, it's pretty simple. You just got to pull off this one screw and then install the SSD and put the screw back. <laughs> So as you can see, after installing a new SSD drive in this laptop, it still doesn't show in the file explorer in Windows. So that means it's not going to be usable. The next step we need to do, we need to initialize this SSD drive because this is going to be the first time it's ever used. So you, we're going to need to initialize it. And for that, I'm going to be using a Cronus Disk Director, which I have created a USB stick so I can run it from the BIOS. You can also use other programs if you wish, but I prefer using a Cronus because it seems to be working fine every time I use it. Let's go ahead and restart this laptop. And when you're restarting it, you got to press F12. 
This is gonna allow you to choose the bootable media. So we just gotta use the EFI USB device. And this is USB disk 2.0. And it's gonna start loading a Cronus loader. And we just gotta choose a Cronus disk director, which is number three from this list. Once it started, you can see that the user interface of this program is very simple. And the disk 2 is the SSD that we have just installed. As you can see, it's 1.863 terabyte. And the other disk is the one that came with this laptop. I have divided it into two partitions to have Windows in one partition and the rest of the files on other partition. So what we gotta do, as you can see, it's uninitialized. So we gotta initialize it before we're gonna be able to use it. So just right click on it and then you can choose which partition and scheme you want to use because it's a new ssd you want to be using the gpt partitioning scheme and not mbr because mbr is very old if you want to see more in detail what's the difference between gpt and mbr i have another video that you can check out i'm going to put a link in the upper right corner and as well as one in the description so check it out and for the type you can just choose basic and then just press ok and then the way this program works, you have to also to commit to pending operations because you can choose a few different operations and they're just gonna be executed at the same time. So you're just gonna press commit pending operations and then just press continue. There we go. So it was already done. It was like super light and quick. So now we have to actually create a volume or a partition. So just right click on it and left click create volume. And we just wanna create basic volume. You can also do different configurations such as simple span or or street volumes and they're basically designed for either faster speed or more reliability but in this case i'm just going to show you an example of just basic volume and this is most of what i'm using then you can also choose how much you want to allocate in case you want to create two partitions instead of just one then you can break it down in two pieces the file system that you want to be using is ntfs this is the most common file system, so you don't need to change it. And I'm not going to split it in two different volumes. And I'm just going to use the whole volume of this SSD to create one partition. You can also type a volume label in, if you want to call it some specific name. For example, I'm just going to call it ADATA. This way I know this is going to be my second SSD in this laptop. And you can also assign a letter for this drive if you want. And after all the preparations are done, just click finish. Then go ahead and commit to the pending operations again and follow through the same steps. And there we go, it's already done. We have our SSD drive initialized, we have it formatted, and we have created a volume. So now, when we go to Windows, it should be visible through the File Explorer in Windows, and we're gonna be able to use it. This is all the steps that you have to go through. Now we can go ahead and shut off the laptop. When you restart it, you can either remove the USB stick, or you can leave it in if you don't have automatic boot from the USB stick. All right, there we go, the Windows has started. Let's go ahead and check out if everything's working properly. Perfect, so the new SSD is working and you can see we got 1.86 terabyte of space, which is really great. It's gonna give me a lot of storage for my project, for my video. And if you wanna see more videos about this particular SSD and some tests, you can check out the video in the description. I have done a variety of tests about this SSD, so I hope you guys like this video. If you do, please let me know in the comment section below if it has helped you. If you like it, support it with your like. Also subscribe to the channel for more helpful troubleshooting repair videos. I appreciate guys very much your support. I hope you have a nice day. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.